Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries, located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Due to the coronavirus outbreak and social distancing, First Baptist Church has suspended its formal services. This outbreak will not stop his disciples from working. You may visit our website, firstbaptisthbgva.org. First Baptist Church features the Dr. C.E. William as senior pastor. Remember, to wash your hands regularly and practice social distancing and be safe. Over the next few weeks, you will be blessed from the pastor's desk or sermons featuring him or one of our many ministers on staff. For your praying needs, you may contact our ministerial staff, deacons, or deaconess. May the Lord bless and keep you during this trying time in our nation. We hope you are blessed by the message. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries. Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. We hope you find something that will touch your life today and tomorrow. Faith is Alive Ministries is located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You may visit us any Sunday for worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. And now, open your hearts and your minds to the spirit of a living God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As Paul often states, he makes it very important to us that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. And I believe that, that in our process, we would like to thank you for watching us here uh, each and every Sunday uh, during the week. And, and our utmost intent is to, to bless people with, with God's Word and produce an environment or an outreach that will allow folk uh, to return back to Christ or those who don't know Him uh, learn to, to know Him and, re and receive Him uh, as their personal Savior. And this is called a, the kingdom building process. Remember the building uh, is not the church. The church is, uh, is the people themselves. Uh, each, each and every one of us have a task and a job to do and, and we're praying that this program will bring families uh, together and congregations to, to worship and praise the Lord uh, in this ultimate day and time. Uh, remember we're one body, many members. Uh, people are hungry for the word and we, you know, we can help someone by, by seeking Christ and finding Christ uh, from within. Uh, we certainly thank you for watching uh, our, our TV series we're, we're praying for your continuous prayers uh, for this ministry as it uplifts and feeds uh, uh, the congregations as well as the communities uh, in the spirit of Christ we'll see you at the end of the program God bless you, may heaven smile upon you good morning, let me say happy Easter to each of you on, on today and we thank God for the blessings of being able to see this another Easter holiday. We're grateful that he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. In spite of all that we're going through, the condition of the country, and the condition of our individual homes, we thank God for this and another holiday season. But in all that we desire to do on this particular day is to to wish each family a joyous and happy uh, Easter day and, and let you know that God is, is still in the powerful blessing business. Uh, let us bow for a moment of prayer uh, on this joyous day and, and ask God to just intervene and be with us as we hear from on high. Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for uh, even the storm that we're passing through uh, this very hour. The early rising, the, the morning uh, setting and the birds chirping outside and the sun rising just coming just above uh, the clouds. Uh, even as we speak now, God, we know that as it rises, you rose up early one morning, Father, with all power, heaven and earth in your hand. And I desire to serve you 
all the days of our lives. Master, show us this day what thou would have us to do and teach us your will. Take nothing from, from us that, that you haven't already given, Father, but oh, allow us to be able to see that you, you're able to do all things. This we ask in Jesus' name as you bless uh, the service on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for our family, our First Lady, uh, Michael, and, and our relatives and friends are doing well on, on, on this end. Uh, somewhat seem like that we're shut in, but we're not shut in for the wrong reason. We're, uh, we're, we're kind of boxed in to, to spend more time with, uh, with God, and we thank Him for that. Your attention is invited to, man, to the, the Gospel according to Matthew around the 28th chapter. Uh, and our key verse for our, our thought uh, this morning is uh, the sixth verse of that 28th chapter. Uh, this, the chapter opens up as, as they went to the, the place where Jesus was buried. And, and we find the conversation going on. The angel had already shook up everything and, and rolled the stone away. But, but in the, the essence of all of this, uh, we find... Uh, uh, the young lady saying uh, some great words that can really touch our hearts. And here she says, uh, he is not here as she, the stone was rolled away and, and she went back to look into the tomb. And even after the earthquake, uh, something happened. God's still moving his hand. The angel even sat on the stone after, after he had rolled it away. Uh, but Mary, look what she says here. She said, he's not, he's not here, for he is risen. Uh, just as he said. He said he, said he was going to get up in three days. And then she invited him over. She said, come and see the place where, uh, where he lays. I am so excited about this, uh, that the stone was rolled away so we could get in to see that he had risen. Uh, God has all power, heaven and earth in his hand. And, and we know that he can do all things, but he got up. And, and I want to proclaim today three things why he got up and when he got up. It's not how he got up, but, but that he got up. He got up because he had all power in his hand. That's number one. And, and, and number two, he got up because because he had defeated Satan. He had went down into hell and actually defeated Satan. Third, he he, he got up because, because just to set us free uh, through this plan of, of salvation. So I want to focus on these three points briefly here, uh, this Easter uh, sunrise Sunday. And, and focus on this alone where we can cap this and, and take it with us in spite of what the world is going through right now. He got up because he had the power. There is no power like, like, like his power. It's not man's power, but his power. And remember, that this was God in the flesh, God coming down in the flesh. Let's parallel John 1 and 1. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Parallel that with Genesis 1 and 1. We'll find that John's purpose here, even in John 1 and 1, was, was to the fact that it established the, the main thought for us that, that, that Jesus is God and man uh, in one person. Uh, and the good part of, about that is to, too many of us try to proclaim or we separate. But this is God. The two verses, Genesis 1 and 1, well, two chapters, Old Testament, Genesis 1 and 1, and John 1 and 1. They parallel each other. So he got up because he had all power in his hand. He, didn't nobody have to, to, to wait or do anything. And the reason he got up, uh, he got up because he had finished the, the great work that he set out to do. He got up because he had defeated Satan. And I know many of us... Uh, to try, we don't understand that particular fact. Where uh, we're not sure uh, of, of how did he de de defeat Satan. But let's go to Revelations one and uh, seventeen and eighteen, 
And when we go to Revelation, we got to realize that this means that it's the unveiling of the divine mysteries of, of Christ or God. Or Christ, Christ is both the, the mystery and, and the revealer of, 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 of everything. Uh, this, this revelator here in this passage uh, in Revelations is God uh, and the Son all in one. Uh, I, 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 he said, I am the first uh, and the last. Uh, th this is interesting because we must not only believe that who he is and that he saved us, uh, but we must believe that, that he rose up from the grave. You see, the, the hope that we have is, is of, of, of the resurrection and how he did this all just because he loved us so much. His body uh, is what died and rose again. In other words, in the same portion of it, as we freed up from sin through his blood, we have to die within ourselves. Not literally physically dead, but turn from the world uh, and our wicked ways. But we must believe that he rose from the grave. We've got to go back to that point where we not only actually, but he did get up out of the grave. And that's the hope that we have uh, in this resurrection. This resurrection day, we need to work hard, uh, work strong, and, and study our, our words, study, study the Bible, learn to, to, to just work with and, and for God for all that he has done for us. His body as flesh is what died uh, and rose again. But Jesus Jesus was, was let, let's, let's talk about what he did in, in the second phase of this. Uh, not don't, did he have power uh, to get up from the grave, but what he did while he was down in the grave. Jesus, uh, when he descended into hell, took the keys of hell away from the devil. And when he rose, he, he did away with death. We're not talking about we have to leave this world, but, but there is an eternal life that's coming after we leave this world. Death was the last enemy to be done away with, all for the sins of the world. The devil can't put nobody in hell. Jesus is the only one who can do that. Jesus has the key. He went down and defeated Satan, took the keys, so no one else could enter or exit without him. The only ones Jesus will put in hell are the devil's angels and those who reject him. So those of us who, who don't know him, uh, don't want to get to know him, don't desire to know him, that is rejection. Uh, and as, as joyous as we may be on this holiday season, uh, we can't forget the reason that he got up out of the grave with all power when he had defeated Satan. And we, we're not talking about a, a few rounds of bouts. He took on your sins uh, and mine. And at billions and millions of people, that's a whole lot of weight uh, there on the cross that he took uh, for each one of us. But when Jesus said, I am he that liveth, uh, it is life forevermore. Jesus, Jesus Christ, says, he's the absolute living one. He has the life uh, within himself. He is life, and, and he's our source of life. He has control of everything uh, in heaven, uh, earth, and in hell. So, I mean, out of being, uh, getting up out of the grave, going down and defeating Satan, and, and, and rising up with that all in his hand, he did this all. And, and, and in just, in just to summarize and bring this to a close, he got up to set us free through salvation. So one, he got up because he had power. Uh, second, uh, he got up because he had already defeated Satan for you and I. And third, he got up to set us free through his salvation. The book of Titus there uh, in the second chapter uh, and the 14th verse, it, it so reads, who gave himself for, for us that, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify uh, unto himself the good works. The word, the word redeem here, you've got to understand, it is, is very important for, for us to, to understand. And I, I know that, that, that you can can, can feel and know that the word redemption itself means to be released by payment of a ransom. Uh, in other words, we see the ransom paid with his precious blood 
uh, that he shed it for their, us, you and I, and all of us uh, there on the cross. Our Lord and Savior did this all. He gave himself. Uh, he substituted every sin, everything that we could do wrong, just because he loved us so much. He gave himself uh, because of Calvary, sin and iniquity. He died there on the cross. Jesus took, took our sin upon his body, took it all on him, and sin died on the cross. Then he turned around and through his blood, he purified us uh, with his precious blood. He clothed us, and hallelujah, I, I, I love this portion, uh, with his righteousness. That's how we become peculiar people once we receive Jesus uh, as our personal Savior. He brought us with a price, and this price was the blood that he had shed. He paid, thank you, Lord. Uh, he paid the price for, for us to, to, to be adopted into the family of God. And the signs that follow us all after this is what he shall continuously do for us. So in closing, it is our job to become disciples and continue to work in the glory and honor of God and for us to do and be all that we can do through our living testimony and our good works and most of all, our obedience to him. It's not an obligation to do good works, but it is a privilege. Just as, as he arose, we need to rise up and become warriors on the battlefield working for the Lord. Just as he rose up, we shall rise again, even after death on this side. The Bible tells us that the dead in Christ shall rise, get up out of the grave. Just like he pulled Lazarus up, he will pull those who were buried uh, in his precious and righteous name. To him and in him, and all of him is about eternal life. And of course, Satan uh, will not only get defeated on this side, but we're coming back to reign with him. Uh, the Bible tells us over a thousand years. I want to be in that number. You ought to want to be in that number. But most of all, work hard, work diligently, work faithfully to work out your soul's salvation. Three important things in this life uh, that while we're passing through. Number one, you got to realize that he rose with all power, Power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead, power to move mountains, power to take you through the valley. And David even reminisces with us and says, Yea, though I walk through the valley's shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they will comfort me. God is, is going to send a comforter uh, in this hour of agony. He's going to send a comforter to soothe and dry our weeping eyes. On this Easter holiday season, let this Christ rise up in you. Let your mind and your heart come together as one and connect with the soul and reunite with God. Rekindle, bring that reunion to surface where you may be a living testimony and do what God would have you to do. Through him, there is eternal life. We're not talking about just breathing because once we get with Jesus, we, we shall be changed. There, and one thing you got to understand, and I just want to make this quick, time is only on earth. I say again, time is only on earth. Where Jesus is, there is no time. There's just eternity. And our task is to live so he can use us each and every day of our lives. So when you rise up in the morning, rise up in the name of Jesus. When you rise up against these troubled times, rise up knowing that God will comfort and see you through it. When you rise up, rise up like he did. He gave you and I some power that we need to be able to use through prayer, faith, and supplication. And whatever you do this Easter holiday, don't you give up on God. Keep the faith. Keep fighting. And hold on to his unchanging hand. With that, we'll close wishing you, again, a joyous holiday. Enjoy the family. Enjoy friends and loved ones. 
and amen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. And there's nothing you can't do that Jesus can't help you through. Paul makes it very clear. I can. And you ought to say, I will. Be in his will so I can do all things through him. Father, we're grateful and we thank you for the early rising this morning. We thank you for the morning hour. A few hours after sunset. A few hours. Of, and Father, we have been blessed to see another year, another day. Some have outrun us and gone on. Many, Father, are troubled on every side. But I know that you can calm the storm. I know that you can make our way brighter. I believe without a question, Father, that you not only are still sitting on the throne, but you're guiding us every step of the way. Bless the sick and shut in, the nursing homes, the prisons. Bless all that listen at this broadcast. Now bless my home, Father, in a special way. Anoint every doorstep, every, every portion, every room. But most of all, Father, show us how to work on that home that you've prepared for us in heaven. This we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we pray God's blessing upon you, your family, and your loved ones. Happy Easter on behalf of First Lady and myself. Praise God. We hope you enjoyed the message you know, today as much as we enjoyed being used by the Lord. Uh, Christ said in Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye to all the world, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And we've got to remember the Great Commission of going out and spreading the Word of God. Uh, we must go beyond our, our place of worship. In other words, we come in to learn how to, to worship and praise, and we go out to serve. And going out to serve means sometimes requiring us to go beyond the church pew uh, itself. If you'd like to become a sponsor of our program, uh, our announcer will, uh, will come right back to you shortly, and we hope to see you again here on next week. Oh, if, if you're in the Harrisonburg area, uh, I want you to feel free to to visit the, the First Baptist Church. Uh, any Sunday morning that you so desire, uh, service begins at 11 o'clock. Remember, just, just a little thought for today. No one can choose your mountain or tell you when to climb. It's yours alone to challenge at your own pace and your own time. May God be with you.